गीता दीदी इट वॉज सो नाइस मीटिंग यू एट द मेला आई हैव रियली लर्न अ लॉट अबाउट डिजिटल डिवाइस नाउ थैंक यू रोहन इट्स माई प्लेजर टू हेल्प यू I know that the internet is very useful these days. I wish you could find some time and teach me more about the internet. Hmm, let me see. Oh yes, I am free tomorrow. I will definitely come to your home and teach you about the internet. Wow, that's so generous of you. I will definitely be waiting for you at home tomorrow. Okay then, see you tomorrow. Hi Didi please come in I'm so happy you have come to my house Didi you have said that nowadays the internet is used almost everywhere and it can make life very easier Can you now tell me more about the internet Sure Rohan I am here to assist you today First let me explain what the internet is The internet is a global network of computers that connects millions of computers worldwide. The internet allows people to communicate and exchange information or data with people all around the world. Through internet, you can send any information or messages to any part of the world within seconds. Let us learn about some of the applications of internet. The internet has number of uses across various fields few of them are in matters of communication the internet is used for sending and receiving messages by using electronic mail internet helps in getting information regarding availability of job in different sectors and areas people can publish their resume online for prospective jobs Books and other study material stored around the world can be easily located through the internet. Latest encyclopedias are available online. There are a lot of information internet provides in the field of health and medicine. People can get information about various diseases and can receive help. One can use the internet to gather information about various tourist places. It can be used for booking holiday tours, hotels, train and flights. Online shopping can also be done using internet. By just providing account details, you can perform the transaction. How do we get the internet in our computers, Didi? To connect to the internet, you will require some devices and network service providers. These are some of the ways to connect to the internet. Dial-up connection integrated services digital network direct internet access digital subscriber line dial up connection dial up connection uses the telephone line to connect to the internet the computer uses the modem and connects the home phone line to it a call will be made to the internet service provider's modem and the link will be made to enable the access to the internet This was the first way to connect to the internet. Integrated Services Digital Network ISDN. ISDN is similar to dial-up but offers connectivity through digital phone lines. It allows the usage of phone and internet at the same time. You need an external modem to use this network. ISDN enables wide band with digital transmission over the public telephone network which means more data can be sent at one time direct connections do not require dialing and logging on to the internet or any other network services do offer guarantees of stable bandwidth availability and near constant latency which are the attributes not guaranteed on more public platforms DSL or broadband is a high speed internet service like cable internet DSL technology allows internet and telephone service to work over the same phone line without requiring customers to disconnect either their voice or internet connections DSL internet services are used primarily in homes and small businesses DSL internet service only works over a limited physical distance and remains unavailable in many areas where the local telephone infrastructure 
does not support DSL technology. To access internet, there are three basic elements you need in your computer. Modem, internet service provider and browser. Modem is the device that allows computers to transmit and receive data. This is the device which connects a computer to the internet. Internet service provider or the ISP is a company that provides access to the internet. Browser is the software which retrieves, presents and navigates information on the internet. Some popular browsers are Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome and Safari. You can connect to the internet using cables and wireless technology. A computer that supports wireless technology has a Wi-Fi card. The Wi-Fi card enables wireless communication between the computer and the network. Some of friends have internet facility in their mobile phones. How can someone get the internet in a mobile phone, Didi? To access the internet on your mobile phone, you need these things. A mobile phone that supports internet access, a mobile phone service that supports data transmission, an account from your mobile service provider with data settings for accessing internet on phone. Using internet by 2G, 3G and 4G network. G in 2G, 3G and 4G stands for the generation of the network. A higher number before the G means more power to send out and receive more information and therefore the ability to achieve a higher efficiency through the wireless network. 2G networks are based on narrow band digital networks. Signals are transmitted in the digital format and this dramatically improves the quality of calls and also reduces the complexity of data transmission. The third generation of mobile networks has become popular and it has made the users to access the internet over devices like mobiles and tablets. The speed of data transmission on a 3G network ranges between 384 kbps to 2 mbps. 3G network allows for more data transmission and therefore the network enables voice and video calling, file transmission, internet surfing, online TV, view high definition videos, play games and much more. 3G is the best option for users who need to always stay connected to internet. Fourth generation mobile networks are believed to provide many value added features. In addition to all the 3G facilities, data transmission is believed to go through the roof with speeds ranging between 100 Mbps to 1 Gbps. Can you now show me how to set up the internet in my mobile phone? Sure, Rohan. Let me show you how to set up the internet in both a keypad mobile phone as well as an Android phone. Follow these steps carefully. To use internet in keypad based phones. First, select menu and then internet. Now, to open the home page, either select home or in the home screen, press and hold zero. Next, to enter a web address, select go to address, enter the address and select OK. And then, to search the web, enter the search terms and select search. After you connect to the service, you can start browsing its pages. To see your Wi-Fi settings, go to settings and then Wi-Fi. Choose the connection you want to connect with. Enter password if required. Setting up internet on Android based smartphone or tablet. And these are the steps to connect an Android phone to internet. First, navigate to the settings menu of your Android smartphone or tablet. This can be done via the settings icon in the apps menu on any Android device and sometime via the notifications bar. Now, in the settings menu, you need to find the wireless and network settings. On most devices, click the more or more settings button, whichever is available. 
Now, once you have found the wireless and network settings, you can connect via two options. Mobile Internet, Wi-Fi. To connect to the internet via your mobile phone, you can both pull down the notifications bar and select mobile data option or you can go to the more settings option in wireless and networks option. After that, click on the mobile networks button. There, you will have to check the mobile data checkbox. Once it has been clicked, your phone will start receiving mobile internet. In Android phones, there are also Wi-Fi services. How does one connect to Wi-Fi services, Didi? Very simple. Let me show you how you can connect to Wi-Fi services. First, turn on your Wi-Fi options by clicking the Wi-Fi button in the notifications menu. Now, you will be shown a list of available internet networks. If you have already saved a Wi-Fi network, then it will automatically connect. Otherwise, you may have to select the Wi-Fi network that you want to connect to. If password is required, enter the password and click Connect. Mobile broadband technology, also called wireless wide area network technology, provides mobile internet connectivity. To use mobile broadband, you need a data card and a data plan with a mobile broadband provider. After you get your device and data plan, make sure you activate your subscriber identity module SIM and the mobile broadband service for the SIM. Your mobile operator or device retailer will give you the information to do this. To set up a broadband connection for the first time, follow these steps. Open Connect to a Network by clicking the network icon in the notification area. Right-click your mobile broadband network and then click Connect. If prompted, type the access point name or access string, the username and the password. Change any auto-connect settings that you want to change and then click Continue. To connect to the internet using broadband, open Connect to a Network by clicking the network icon in the notification area. Click the name of your mobile broadband network and then click Connect. Type your mobile broadband PIN if necessary and then press Enter. To disconnect a broadband internet connection, follow these steps. Open Connect to a network by clicking the network icon in the notification area. Click the name of the mobile broadband network and then click Disconnect. I have also heard that one can connect a smartphone to a laptop. Is it true, Didi? Yes, of course, Rohan. You can connect a smartphone to a laptop. Connecting or tethering a smartphone or tablet effectively turn your smartphone into a Wi-Fi hotspot which your laptop can access. Follow these steps to connect an Android phone or tablet to laptop. First, navigate to the wireless and network settings menu. Some phones have an app in the apps menu for creating a wireless hotspot. Now, click Tethering and Portable Hotspot or similar option. Next, turn Portable Wi-Fi Hotspot or similar on and set a network name and or password. Then, connect to the network on your laptop via the available wireless networks in the bottom right hand corner. Wasn't learning about the internet interesting? Now, let's take part in this activity. Didi, do you know why we have to type www in front of a hyperlink when we have to search for something in the internet? www stands for World Wide Web. World Wide Web? I have heard a lot about it. Can you tell me more about it? Sure, Rohan. Let me tell you what the World Wide Web is. World Wide Web www stands for world wide web the world wide web or the web is a subset of the internet and not its synonym the web consists of pages that can be accessed using a web browser telnet ftp internet gaming internet relay chat or irc 
and email are all part of the internet but are not part of the world wide web. The hypertext transfer protocol is the method used to transfer web pages to your computer. With hypertext, a word or phrase can contain a link to another website. The components of World Wide Web are Web Server, Web Browser, Web Page, Website, Web Address. A web server is a system that delivers content or services to end users over the internet. Web servers are computers that deliver web pages. Every web server has an IP address and a domain name. For example, if you enter the URL http colon backslash backslash www.google.com backslash index dot html in your browser this sends a request to the web server whose domain name is google.com the server then fetches the page named index dot html and sends it to your browser a web browser is a software application used to locate retrieve and display content on the world wide web including web images, video and other files. As a client or server model, the browser is the client run on a computer that contacts the web server and requests information. The web server sends the information back to the web browser which displays the results on the computer or other internet enabled device that supports a browser. Web pages are what make up the world wide web. These documents are written in HTML or hypertext markup language and are translated by your web browser. Web pages can either be static or dynamic. Static pages show the same content each time they are viewed. Dynamic pages have content that can change each time they are accessed. These pages are typically written in scripting languages such as PHP, PERL, ASP or JSP. A website is a collection of pages. A web page is an individual HTML document. Website is a connected group of pages on the World Wide Web. It is usually devoted to a single topic or several closely related topics. The first web page that is displayed when you access the website is known as home page. A web address is an address string containing the access protocol, domain name and file path. It is normally used to specify the address of a web page, image or other document on the internet. Web browsers are application programs that are developed to access information on the world wide web. The general features offered by the web browsers include download, bookmarks as well as password management. They also offer functions like spell check, search engine toolbars, tabbed browsing, advertisement filtering and HTML access keys, pop-up and blocking. Now let us learn about the different types of web browsers. The different types of web browser are Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, Opera, Safari. Internet Explorer was developed by Microsoft and introduced in 1995 as a supportive package to Microsoft Windows line of operating systems. This is the most commonly used browser in the world. This browser is great for easy online navigation as well as quick search queries and dynamic security technologies. Firefox is a browser derived from Mozilla and has grown to be the second most popular browser on the internet. Aren't you using Firefox on your computer, Didi? Yes, that is what I am using in my computer. Google Chrome is a web browser developed by Google. It combines a minimal design with sophisticated technology to make the web faster, safer and easier. 
Opera is a browser developed by Opera Software in 1996. Opera is smaller and faster than most of the other browsers. It is fast and user-friendly with keyboard interface, multiple windows, zoom functions and more. The browser is available in Java and non-Java enabled versions. It is an ideal browser for newcomers to the internet. Safari is a web browser developed by Apple Inc. and included in Mac OS X. It was first released as a public beta in January 2003. This browser supports all the latest technologies like XHTML, CSS2, etc. Didi, now show me how to open a web browser. Okay, Rohan, just follow these steps to open a browser. Click the Start button. Go to All Programs and click on any of the web browsers. The browsing window appears. Generally, the web browsers are divided into the following. Title bar displays the name of web page and web browser. It contains three window buttons, Minimize, Restore Down or Maximize and Close. The name of the website or URL that you wish to browse is typed in the address bar. It contains Go or Refresh and Stop buttons. The Go button helps you load a web page or website. The Refresh button helps you to reload the web page and the Stop button stops any current operations by the Explorer. On the left side of the address bar, there are back and forward buttons. These buttons help navigate to the previous and the next website that was visited recently. Menu bar contains many menu options like File, Edit, View, Favorites, Tools and Help. Web page area is the area where the website or web page is displayed. Status bar provides the progress or status of a website or web page as waiting, loading or done. Search engines are websites whose purpose is to find websites that contain the information that a user is looking for but does not know the specific address of that website. Some commonly used search engines are Google, Yahoo, and MSN. Google is the most popular search engine. The SEs use electronic devices called robots or spiders to surf the web. They run around the internet including the www to search for the requested information. Multi or meta SE employs more than one individual SEs to find your keywords. Google and Bing are examples of this SE. The directory uses a directory of websites that are manually examined and categorized as per the information they contain. Yahoo is an example of a directory SE. Search engines are tools used to find information on the internet. Search engines are similar to web pages and have to be opened using a web browser. Usually, searches are based on a word or a combination of words or topics. These words or phrases are known as keywords. The search results may consist of web pages, images, information and other types of files. These are the search engines used widely. Didi, how do we use a search engine to search for anything on the internet? Just use these steps to conduct a search using Google, which is the most popular search engine. First, start the web browser. Next, type https colon backslash backslash www.google.co.in backslash on the address or location bar. Suppose you want to some information regarding schools in rural India, type the keywords as shown. 
Now, click the search button or press the enter key on your keyboard to start search. Look at the list of links that are shown as results. A short description about each website will appear. Click on the most relevant link. If you wish to find out information about any other topic, click back button to go to the home page of the search engine. Now, type keywords about the information you want to find. Next, click on the search button. Various website links will appear. Choose the relevant link and read the information required. If you find any of the links interesting and would like to visit the page again, you can bookmark that page. Then, click on the close button at the top right corner of the browsing window to exit. Now Rohan, I want you to try to use the search engine yourself. Sure, just tell me what to search for. Ok, search for Computer Literacy in Rural India using Google. Step 1. Open the web browser. Step 2. Type www.google.com in the address bar. Step 3. Type Computer Literacy in Rural India in search box. Step 4. Click on Google Search. Various results related to computer literacy in rural India will be displayed. Now that you know a lot about the internet, let's take part in this activity. Click the correct option for each question. That's right. Well done. That's right. Well done. That's right. Well done. That's right. Well done.